Hello and welcome to another sketch series. I decided to change the format and instead of doing numbered episodes, I would tell what I'm drawing today. So today I'm going to be drawing Mad Max, Furiosa, and Nux. I'm actually only going to show the entire process for Furiosa because drawing all three of them took me a little bit over an hour and I really don't want to be talking for an hour and I'm pretty sure no one wants to sit and listen to me talk for an hour. So we begin as usual with the sketch phase. Uh, as you can see at the very beginning I only had the overall gesture, in other words the pose, that my character was going to be doing. And now I'm going in with the pencil and using that gesture and just kind of filling in the details from what I remember. And uh, I'm also looking at a, um, a reference, so I'm seeing one of the character posters. So as you can see, Furiosa is a really cool character and she has a really cool design, very minimalistic. Even her metallic arm thing is very minimalistic. I, I love it. I love the art style in the movie. Overall, it's a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it already, what are you waiting for? I would recommend it over the Avengers. And if you know me, you know that that's saying a lot because I love me some comic book stuff. Anyway, getting back to the drawing, you can kind of see me filling out the overall mechanics of the arm. I'm not going to get lost in too much detail because uh, I know that a lot of the detail will be blurred away in my inking and in my especially in my colors because this time I'm gonna do things a little bit differently I decided to try some watercolors so later on I'll be talking more about that but I just kinda of wanna go over the, the basics of the gesture I decided to first start off with the pose and for the pose I drew in a female thin character with no hair and I know Furiosa has very, very short, almost a buzz cut, I think. And uh, But she's missing an arm. However, for the gesture, those details don't really matter. What matters is, does my pose look natural? Does it look like something she might do? And does it fit the character? <coughs> Excuse me. So I decided to go in and, and fill out the rest of her. She has a bunch of belts there, and then she has that uh, shoulder holster for her arm, mechanical arm thing. That's one thing in the movie that's like, that looks super cool, but in this post-apocalyptic movie, her arm moves, which means that they have to have neurosurgeons because they have to connect it to neurosynaptic en endings in her arm. And uh, that kind of, that was one thing that I looked at the second time I watched the movie and I said, wait a second here, that doesn't, doesn't feel right. But other than that, I mean, the movie was fantastic. It's over the top. And I love it. It's been a long time since I've seen something like that. I added in a second arm in the back. And uh, now I'm going to go in with my broken Pentel pocket brush. It is genuinely broken. At this point I have done Nux, Mad Max, and Furiosa. And all three of them came out just janky because of this pocket brush. And I think I'm going to have to end up throwing it away and getting a new one. Which really upsets me because I got it on sale for like $2 at a buy one thing get another thing for a penny sale at Aaron's Brothers here in the US um, anyway I'm gonna try to use it because I figured you know what the jankiness and the overall broken texture that it gives kind of lends itself to the art style of the movie so it might not look too bad the problem is that all the details that I put in on her arm ended up being thrown out the window because this thing just kind of blocked all over them and it just it made a mess other than that, I love the thick and thin. I love that I can uh, put in some specific lines here and there to show where the 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 shoulder meets the chest, and uh, and where that goes over the other lines. And it's just I love using it at this point, and I wouldn't switch it for anything else. Also, if you've seen the movie, you know that she has very dark makeup that she wears in the front of her face. Turns out it's a tar from her truck that she drives. So I thought I'd do that with just this flat black before I start getting into the watercolors. So because I'm going to be doing watercolors, I need to make sure that this is 100% dry. So I ended up leaving it alone for a long time to dry before I started any of the watercolors. So if you're going to be doing that with inks, I highly recommend you let a long time pass before you start watercoloring. At this point, I'm going to switch over to inking, uh, uh, I mean watercoloring. 
And I'm not using anything fancy, just a couple of regular brushes that I stole from my dad. And as you can see, my watercolor set is nothing special. I think it cost me 16 bucks. And it's got a full, pretty nice, uh, what is that? One, two, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. What is that? Uh, 24 color palette, which is pretty good. I'm not mixing any of the colors. I just threw down the second yellow down, as you can see there. And now on the top, I'm going to be throwing down the blue green, which is the second one from the bottom on the second column. Um, I think I'll put some visual markers on the video just so I don't have to reference which colors I'm using. Uh, but yeah, it's it was a blast to do this. At first, I, I wasn't really sure what I was doing, so the background in this is a lot of me trying to guess, like, all right, let me try to control uh, what's happening here and there. You can kind of see me go in with a napkin and wipe away some of the watercolor that bled into my inked drawing. I didn't want it to bleed in. I wanted it to be really stylized like the movie with the very heavy blues and yellows and oranges but uh, it kept bleeding in and at some point I realized I think it was either in this drawing or in the Nux drawing I realized you know what just let it bleed in it doesn't matter I think it adds some grittiness to the drawing which lends itself to the style of the movie once again uh, here I'm going in with the napkin and I'm really trying to control everything and uh, it's a learning process to do this kind of stuff if you've never done watercolor before, I recommend it because it teaches you to kind of let go. And I'm one of those kinds of artists and kinds of people that like to have everything very controlled in my life. And to work with a medium that, like watercolor, where as, as soon as it touches the paper, it just bleeds everywhere. It, it's To me, it becomes extremely frustrating and it's just makes me want to flip the table and throw everything away. But I'm learning to kind of let the watercolor go where it wants to go, do what it wants to do, and look at it and say, you know what, that's kind of cool, I'm going to leave it. And uh, this drawing, definitely no. I don't really let it do what it wants to do. You can see me very clearly trying to control what's happening extremely with this napkin and coming back in and pulling off a lot of the pigment and a lot of the water and trying to delicately blend everything. In my Nux drawing uh, and in my Mad Max one especially, I just kind of threw colors in and let it go. So now I'm coming in and I'm painting this. And what I decided to use was the gray, which is the top left one. And just kind of go over all of it and do some light shadowing with the gray. And I decided, my mindset was to say, well, first I'll do some shadows and then I'll throw the colors on top of that once they're dry. Um, again, I cut out a lot of the pieces for these videos, so if it looks like I'm painting over wet, I'm not. I let a lot of t a long time pass before I do another layer. Maybe for this kind of stuff, maybe like five ten minutes before each layer, just so that I know that everything's dry. Um, another thing that you have to learn with watercolor, which you can see me struggling with, is that if I scrape too hard at the watercolor. Uh, the colors themselves, I will pick up a lot of pigment and I won't pick up a lot of water and then I'll have this really extreme pigment which colors my line drawing. And I didn't like it so I decided to go over it with a napkin and I thought that was a cool effect because it left some very dark shadows and some cool contrast. So you'll see me go back in and add a lot of that. Now at this point I'm coloring the details and again I'm just doing very very uh, monochromatic coloring style. In other words I'm using very few colors and trying to just kind of blend them all together and create this uh, desaturated character in a very highly saturated world which is the overall tone I got from the from the movies and it was watching the movies was just mind-blowing. The cinematography was just over the top the art direction and the vehicle design and character design was just spot on. Oh my gosh, I can't talk enough about how awesome this movie was. So, the next thing that I decide to do is to, yeah, is to go in with some colors and start adding colors to my drawing. So you can see me adding a little bit of a brownish here and there, a light brown for the top and a darker brown for the bottom. And then I'll go in a little bit and do the belts as well and I decided to make those a different tone of brown and I probably should have written down what colors I was using also just so you know 
I looked up what brand these watercolors are, but I don't actually remember because I bought them and the kit, the box that it came in said the brand, but the actual plastic that it's housed in doesn't say what brand it is. So it's generic watercolor number whatever. You walk into Michael's or Aaron's Brothers and just buy a set and start painting and see what you get. And you can see my brushes. There's nothing fancy going on. Mostly I use the two brushes with the gold. Uh, the gold plated just because I like the, their feel and I like their size the bigger one is more for the backgrounds and the smaller one is more for the foregrounds and the other one is very for very fine details now in this drawing I, I didn't do fine details I decided that it might be cool to try something very interesting for the eyes and I used a blue highlighter like one of those school highlighters and I went into the eyes and I just really quickly with that blue highlighter you see there popped color into the eyes and I loved it and so for the Mad Max and Nux I do the same thing and it gives it a really cool blend here I'm doing the lips I'm using the very fine brush to do it and it was a mix of pink and black and just keeping with the desaturated look I'm pulling off as much pigment as I can and leaving a very desaturated look Something I forgot to record is that I later when this was dry, I went over it and you can see me adding some yellow highlight to the eyes just to give it more pop. After uh, I was done painting and recording, I went in with a, a pink pencil, just a pink colored pencil, and lightly went over the skin to give it a little bit more blush, but I didn't record that on this video, so I apologize for stealing the opportunity for you guys to watch me mindlessly droned lightly with a lazy pink pencil um, I'm being sarcastic if you can't tell now I'm going in with the, the white uh, highlighter here the white uh, jelly roller and I bought two I bought a thicker one so it makes a little bit thicker um, lines I bought it over Memorial Day weekend it was a great sale I got some Prismacolors I got some of this stuff it was awesome um, and I'm just kind of going over some of the chrome parts and some of the creases and some of the highlighted areas and really trying to add a little bit of detail. If you see me turning this, it's because the camera sits on a steady thing and I have to work around the camera and work around the fact that I can't come in from the right side of the drawing. And so often it's like, oh, I could really make that better if I could just turn my hand differently. Plus I'm left-handed and it kind of, uh, it's just broken. But it looks pretty cool so far so I'm really satisfied with this drawing these three sets came out really wonderfully so just signing it there that's my scratch from my cat and here are the finished pieces you can see Furiosa, Nux and Mad Max and you can see I really let go of the watercolors on the other two drawings but the Furiosa one was very controlled the Nux one I went over the tattoo and I just had a blast doing it and then I used a silver sharpie for the lips Kind of ruined it a bit, but that's okay. And Mad Max, again, the background is amazing. I love the color contrast on on all of these and the desaturated characters in a saturated world. Anyway, we're done. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think I'm going to label all my future videos as what I'm drawing. So I hope you like that, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.